Welcome back to Duca's Copy TV, and after another week of various rate decisions and other initiatives pointing towards a show of a unification between central banks as they try to kickstart an ailing world economy, it's time once again to look at the week ahead. Joining me on the line today is Senior Market Analyst Michael Hewson from CMC Markets. Michael, let's start with the US. On Monday, we've got the advanced retail sales release, and then on the Wednesday, there's the Fed's beige book. The advanced retail sales declined in May. How do you think they'll fare this time? Yeah, well, obviously, advanced retail sales are always a good indicator of you know, consumer spending, um, given the you know, recently fairly buoyant consumer confidence figures that we've seen with respect to uh, Michigan specifically. That's always generally a a fairly good benchmark, and that's that's still at fairly elevated levels. Um, you know, having said that, um, we did see a decline in May in, in advanced retail sales of minus 0.2 percent. We're looking to see that decline reversed, um, looking for around about uh, a 0.2 percent rise. Um, you mentioned the beige book and and the regions, and um, I think that will be quite key in terms of whether or not the Fed. Um, thinks that it, um, well, all the markets think that the Fed will embark on further QE. Um, if economic activity in the regions looks, you know, fairly okay, then I think that really puts back um, any sort of possibility of, you know, QE3. And given the fact that, obviously, the last Fed minutes showed that um, Operation Twist um, is going to go until the end of November. But I think one of the key things that I am keeping an eye out on Monday is um, the IMF are due to um, give their latest growth forecasts, not only for the global economy, but also for the US economy as well. And I think there's an expectation they could well get downgraded. So I think you know, we need to keep an eye on them as well. We know the markets have been waiting for some time now for an announcement from the Fed on QE3. Do you think we're going to hear anything new next week? No, I don't think we will. Um, you know, I think there's, the, the market seems to be fixated on QE3, and um, we're not going to get it, not before the election. Um, the only reason, I think, the only reason we would get it is if a, a U.S. economic data fell off a, fell off a cliff. And um, judging by the figures that we've seen thus far, certainly with respect to U.S. payrolls and the unemployment rate, um, and uh, the fact that um, inflation is roundabout under control, I think the, the barriers for further QE are um, higher than people may well think. And then, of course, you've got the political aspect, you know, in a, you know, November election and election year. And I think the Fed is really what, going to want to stay out of that particular debate. So I think while economic data remains fairly, um, you know, not, not great, but middling, um, I think we're just going to see more of the same. Now, I just want to focus on Europe, as it's going to be, once again, a closely watched topic next week, and there'll be an announcement on Spain's banks. Also on Tuesday, we've got the UK CPI release and German ZEW survey, and then the jobless claims change uh, on the Wednesday for the UK. What are your thoughts looking ahead to all of those? Well, I certainly think with respect to the UK and the CPI, we're not really expecting any change on that. We're still... Um, it's, still, it's still expected to come in well above the Bank of England's um, 2% target, 2.8%. Um, um, I would actually suggest that we actually might see it push higher again because a lot of the decline last month that we saw down to 2.8% was as a direct result of high oil prices coming lower from the highs that we saw in mid-March. Um, and mid in mid-March, they're £80 pounds a barrel. They've they kept, they've basically come down 20% since then. I think the biggest thing with respect to the UK is the Bank of England minutes. Um, after the bank um, pumped an extra £50 billion pounds worth of QE, I'd like to. I'd be very interested to see what the split was for that decision. Um, and I think the minutes should basically shed some light on that. As for the German ZEW, um, expecting a reading of about minus 15, a slight improvement on the minus 16.9 that we saw in June. Um, given the fact that um, Germany's biggest export market is the periphery, I don't really see too much of a rebound in that. Um, and, uh, and as such, I think that uh, most of the focus next week will be on Eurozone finance ministers 
and the Spanish banking bailout. Finally, Michael, with what you've said in mind, what are your top three releases or events to look out for next week? Basically, the IMF um, growth forecasts on Monday, the Bank of England minutes on the Wednesday, and obviously the Eurozone uh, finance ministers meeting and the discussion surrounding the um, Spanish banking bailout. There is one other thing. Mr. Pananke is going to be talking on in the middle of next week, and we may get some further clues with respect to the Fed's views on the likelihood of further QE. OK, thanks for joining us, Michael. Michael Hewson there from CMC Markets. The week ahead, we'll be back again next Friday, but until then, enjoy your weekend. Goodbye.